in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching that's bishop manasse please give him a big god bless you pastor jakes is in our midst too. hallelujah amen Thank you, Dr. Anointed. Thank you for your presence. We really honor you. We appreciate you. And please, let's honor our mother, Dr. Mrs. Onu. God bless you, ma. In the name of Jesus, everyone who has come visiting inside or outside, we honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 20 from verse 28. Acts 20 from verse 28. He says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Take heed therefore first to yourself and then to the flock. All the flock in fact he says, over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. He says to feed the church of God. Which he had purchased with his own blood. That means feeding believers and nourishing them with spiritual truth. Is the responsibility of every man of God. Beyond the administrative duties of a man of God. Your primary assignment over God's people. Is to feed them. Jeremiah 3.15 and I will give you pastors according to my heart. And the Bible says they shall feed you. Give it to us please. 315 Jeremiah. They shall feed you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I will give you pastors according to my heart. And they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Every time we are gathered it is important for us to know why we are here. We are not here just to fulfill the ritual of church. We are here because there is a menu prepared by the Spirit unto our growth, unto our excelling. The only way the believer grows, listen carefully, is by an encounter with the Word of God. If you are bankrupt of the Word of God, you will never be able to rise, to thrive, and to excel. Did you hear that? If you are bankrupt of the word of God, you will never be able to rise, to thrive, and to excel. Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. I want to talk about a number of things tonight and then we'll pray. It was just stirred up in my heart. You see, Zaria has a very prophetic um, assignment. It's like a spiritual school of infantry. Is where believers are trained, is where champions, destiny makers are recruited and prepared. You see, this governs the kinds of teachings that come as far as the Zaria community is concerned. Because this is where God finds people and this is where he begins to make them. Hallelujah. Many of the people today that you celebrate in this nation across the globe, God caused their feet to pass within this soil. It's a spiritual school of infantry. You are, if you get it right here, then you are on your way to an excelling life. If you waste time here, in fact, give us Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at 16 and 17. Ephesians 5. The Bible says, redeeming the time. Go back to verse 15. He says, see then that you walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately. Not as fools. So one of the way you know a fool is that he wastes time without regret. 
Time keeps passing and there is no regret whatsoever. The Bible says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, verse 16, because the days are evil. Do you know what this means? You will not always have the same opportunity. The meaning of the days are evil means when God puts you in a vantage position today, either proximity to great people, either proximity to an environment that stimulates your spiritual growth. He says, maximize that moment. You will not always have it. The days are evil. Then verse 17 says, give it to us please, 17, same scripture. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The faster you know the will of God for your life and destiny, the faster you take your journey towards the course of a great life. Every time you are in confusion, for those of us that drive, if you are driving, say, to Area E or to aviation, and you're not exactly sure of the house you go to, the first thing you do is to slow down. Speed is always affected when there is no clarity of purpose. You have to slow down until you ascertain the direction. Every time there is no clarity of purpose, it affects speed. Hallelujah. So the Bible says to walk circumspectly as wise not as unwise. Let me show you one other scripture. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look at 22 and 23. Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. It says the light of the body is the eye. Isn't it amazing? The light of the body, Jesus is speaking now, is the eye. He says if therefore your eye be single, he's teaching you the power of focus. If your eye be single, it says, thy light, thy whole body shall be full of light. 23. It says, but if your eye be evil, then your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness. You see that? One of the ways that light has a penetrating power is when you converge it together. Hallelujah. When you converge light together, it can set a paper on fire without you touching it. But once that light diverges, it will give illumination but it does not have that kind of penetrating power to create an effect. It says if your eye be single. It's not enough to have light. Light must be coordinated towards an area of darkness for the effect to be felt. Are we together? Yes. How many of you have had someone on a torchlight? Maybe you were fixing something and the person was shining the light somewhere else. You are not in complete darkness, but you are not seen well. You would tell him, zoom the light towards what I am doing. So many of us have random light that is scattered. And the Bible says, if you can focus your light. Do you know what that means? To contend for knowledge along the areas that matter. Listen, destiny proposes to you many kinds of spiritual information. But all those information you have do not have equal value as far as your life and destiny is concerned are we together there are ratings to every spiritual information we have and all of them do not weigh the same value in the spirit and in destiny there are some things when you learn it carries the same value of learning 10 other things i hope you are following tonight yes there are minor issues and there are major issues. There are lighter spiritual issues. And there are major heavier spiritual issues. Your ability to distinguish the kind of information that is needed. I will always liken it to cooking. Many of us cook here, I believe. And all the ingredients that are needed in your food. Two or three people can be given the same ingredients. In the same kitchen and the taste of the food will be different what was the difference the combination not the presence of the ingredients one person can cook nonsense in the presence of correct ingredients what is responsible for the nonsense is not the falsehood of the ingredients is that the person did not know how to combine them correctly for someone the yam will burn or the food will burn. Am I right on that? Or whatever it is will burn. And another person will prepare the same meal. Same ingredients. 
For instance, God has given everyone almost the same ingredients. Let's take for a case study, time. All of us have the same time, 24 hours. And yet there are people who make an enviable destiny out of that resource of time. And other people waste their lives out of that same resource, time. Another resource, health. Two people can have the same privilege of being healthy. And for 10 years, one will waste the gift of health. And for another person, he will maximize that to stir up his life onto a great destiny. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. Now, still in my illustration, you've heard me say, for those of you who follow uh, Abuja teachings, you should be following. If you have one mudu of rice, do you put one mudu of salt? Hello? Ladies, if you are cooking and you put one tear of rice in the pot, are you going to put salt the same quantity as the rice? No. Now, that does not mean salt is useless. But the nature of salt does not demand to have that much in the food. Are we together? Yeah. By the time you say you are cooking jollof rice and half of the rice is full of salt, the other half is vegetable and you put three spoons of rice. What do you have there? Poison. That's not food. The same salt that is supposed to bless you now becomes the reason for your death. This is the reason why just having truth does not make you victorious. You must be taught how to use it. Truth is like a knife. It is a dangerous weapon. If you are not trained to know how to rightly divide the word of truth, you can have the ingredients for a great life and you will still fail woefully. The worst state any believer can be in is a state of ignorance. The second worst state is the presence of light without wisdom. Did you hear what I said? Please understand carefully that it is if you are in ignorance, you are in your worst state as a believer. Because in ignorance, you are not able to manifest the riches of the divine life that has been wrought for us in Christ. The Zoe life that we have received in Christ the manifestation of it is knowledge dependent. And so if you are bankrupt of light, then you are unable to live out the fullness of the life you have received. But next to ignorance is having light without the intelligence, the wisdom to engage the light appropriately. Having light is like having keys. It does not guarantee that the door will open. Having keys means that you have an assurance that the door could open if you know how to use it. There are keys, there are doors that use fingerprints, there are doors that use your iris, there are doors that use keys that you turn them in certain ways. There are complicated doors where you have to turn both left and right for it to open. It's not like the one you know you turn right once, twice, three and it opens. No, there is a code. Turn right four times. Turn left six times. Turn right two times. Turn left once. Then it opens. You have the key. And yet you will stand there and you will keep turning it. For instance, if you, how many of you have had a traveling bag? And you see those codes, those three letters that are there. If for any reason you forget what you said. Hello? The bag is not disobedient. You just do not know how to engage the knowledge to make it open. Was it four or six? I can't remember. It was zero, zero. Is it two or four? And you can sit there doing your permutation for hours. Except if you tear the bag, of course. That's how it is with many people. So you have the light. But you are wondering, what do I... Now I'm in front of this door. Which light opens this door? Then you keep trying keys. If you have 52 keys... And you want to open a door in one minute. You need accuracy, not knowledge. Accuracy is one of the ways that you redeem time. I hope you are learning. Yes. So it's not enough to just give you knowledge. You must be guided towards accuracy. So that when you stand in front of the door, you know what key. And in a moment, you swing it and it's open. 
I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bring you to a point of spiritual accuracy. Yeah. Accuracy in understanding. Yeah. Accuracy in engaging the forces that produce victory. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So let me challenge us tonight. Philippians chapter 2. My teaching starts now. Verse 12 and 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye has, have always obeyed, not just in my presence only, but even in my absence. Pause, let me explain something here. True obedience demands consistency. If you obey only in the presence of leaders or a man of God, you are a hypocrite. You are called a psychophant, not an obedient person. So he's saying here, my beloved, he's charging his people, Paul. He said, as you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but also in my absence, he leaves you with a powerful instruction. Walk out your own salvation. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Next verse. For it is God that walketh in you. Watch this now. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He never said it is God who gives you good pleasure. He says God is at work in you. Walk out. Take advantage of that engracing he's deposited in you. Are we together? And start working out your own salvation. When you come into Christ, by the way, how do you come into Christ? By having an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. I presume you know that. It is important for you to know how people come into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said, no man cometh to the father except by me. If you have been in church and you have not declared the lordship of Jesus over your life, you are not saved. You may not be an evil person, but you are not saved. Salvation is not something you guess. Salvation is not something you wish. Salvation is not something you just assume. There has to be a conscious declaration of the lordship of Christ believing in your heart the Lord Jesus and confessing with your mouth that God raised him from the dead according to um, Romans 10, 9 and 10. The Bible says, then you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness or, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, when you come into Christ, meaning you are a believer, it does not mean you are victorious. It means you have received the victorious life. Did you hear that? Being saved does not automatically make you victorious in experience. It means you have received the potential for manifesting a victorious life. You can live a defeated life even though you are saved. You can live a defeated life. Your salvation was genuine. You came out in front of everybody. They saw you confess the lordship of Jesus publicly with tears in your eyes and yet 10 years down the line 20 years down the line you are still living a defeated life as a believer a life of misery a life of pain a life that does not bring glory to the name of the Lord what do you think is wrong with such a believer this is why I want to teach you the foundation for the believers excelling the moment you give your life to Jesus Christ, you receive his life in what you call the new birth experience. Please listen very carefully. You, the first kind of knowledge you need to know is the revelation of the finished work of Christ. It is dangerous to start teaching believers that there is something they have to do until you let them know the vantage position they are standing on. Are we together? You build believers who are people of power when you help them appreciate the extent of the victory that has been wrought in Christ. That is the starting point of the believer's journey. You are already defeated if your Christian life starts with trying to walk. Mm -mm. He, the walk out your salvation here is not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to believers that he had laid a certain foundation to. 
Are we together now? Yes. Many believers do not take to heart the victory that is in Christ Jesus, nor the implication to their spiritual lives. And so they begin their journeys with a defeated understanding. They begin their journeys as weak people. They hope that it is prayer that will make them powerful. They hope that it is fasting that will make them powerful. They hope that it is Bible study that will make them powerful. Church attendance. None of these things can equate the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. This is where many people miss it. So, now, there are people, respectfully speaking, within the body of Christ who the consciousness of the finished work of Christ so gets into them that they stop there. Jesus has won the victory. It is true. But how to make it manifest, they may not know. And they will still walk in the midst of that abundant knowledge. They may live victorious lives. I mean defeated lives. Then on the other hand, you find people who from the gate of salvation, they have an eternal warfare mentality that does not have victory in view. So from the, the day they get born again, they hope they will be victorious, but meet them 30 years, 40 years if Christ tarries. They are still on an endless war with themselves and with ignorance. When, listen, when you are given authority to cast out demons, you are given authority to subdue spirits, but you don't cast out ignorance. If someone has a spirit disturbing the person with one shout with revelation, that person is delivered. But you do not cast away ignorance. Hallelujah. So now you must have the consciousness that I have come into a life whose victory has already been defined. Please get this revelation. In your one room, my God, from your lowly estate, coming from a family that is full of curses, coming from a family where no one has risen, coming from a family full of defeat, in spite of the surrounding circumstances, you have it and know it for a fact that I have received within my spirit the incorruptible seed, a, a transmission of the victorious life is in me right now. This becomes the basis for evolving in experience into a victorious life. God is calling you to be a man of God and the beginning of your journey is an endless fight whether with people or with demons you are going to live a frustrated life. Now. Are you learning now? Apostle, well, what about the situations around my life? A defeated life? Nothing is working in my life. No. Listen, you see, you don't become, then believe. You believe to become. This is how it works in the kingdom. As many as believed in him, is that in your Bible? He gave them power to become. Becoming follows believing. What does it mean to believe? Number one, to agree with God in spite of your situations. To be convicted that God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. If I ask you today, what makes you believe that you are going to be a great man tomorrow? And you tell me, I'm praying one hour every day. I'm reading my Bible every day. I will not say you are wrong, but I will say something is wrong with the arrangement of your confidence. There is something that should be the foundation of your confidence. The foundation of your confidence is not the works of the flesh. However, the, your work as a contribution is part of the equation. I'm coming there. So he's speaking to the people and he's saying, work out your own salvation. What does that mean? <laughs> are we together? So, there are believers who are spiritually lazy and their defeat is explainable because they are not willing to engage. But my concern is for the believers that are very hardworking spiritually. All of the rituals that are supposed to produce power, they are consistently engaging in it. And yet the power component that should back up a life of obedience is not there. The reason is because there is something wrong foundationally with the starting point of their understanding. 
Everything in the believer's life starts with Christ. The understanding of the victory that has been wrought. Why then do we fast if it is finished in Christ? Why then do we pray if it is finished in Christ? Why then do we give if it is finished in Christ? Why then do we serve if it is finished in Christ? Why then do we study to show ourselves approved if it's finished in Christ? Why do you submit yourself to be methodically mentored if it's finished in Christ? Why then are you asked to endure hardship as a faithful soldier if it's finished in Christ? Why does the apostle now say for our light afflictions which worketh in us for, um, uh, for, a, which is for a moment that it worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory? Why should he be bringing that information if it is finished? Why does he now say, count it all joy, my brethren, when you face diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience, and that let patience have its full course, that it will make you mature, entire, lacking nothing. Why then does he now say, add to your faith patience, to patience, self-control. Why then does he say, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any prayer, if there be any good report think on these things why then does he say let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus hallelujah if you understand what I am teaching you there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to keep you defeated by your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected King can anything good come out of Nazareth can anything good come out of Kaduna state can it come out of Plateau state can it come out of Lagos can it come out of a family where the children beg their way into university can it come out of a family where everyone has to wait for someone to receive his salary and distribute it around? We are given the opportunity to define our possibilities in the kingdom on account of light, on account of knowledge. So the starting point is a thorough understanding of what Jesus did. Many believers have not taken time to meditate on what the Bible summarizes as the victory that is wrought in Christ. Hallelujah. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, most people do not understand the implication of that statement. What does that mean? He's defeated sin, defeated hell, defeated the grave, defeated Satan. He rose up triumphantly. The Bible says he made a public show of them. Ephesians chapter 2, I believe, and verse 6. Amazing now begins to reveal our positional advantage on account of what Christ has done and here's how he dutifully puts it and had raised us up it's me and Christ I can't raise myself up I don't have that power it is not within I do not have the funding to provide that possibility in my life no amount of fasting and prayer Bible study and spiritual activity can give you this reality it is finished in Christ. Raised us up and made us. It is not something that came by your qualification. Made us to sit together. Say together. Carry this mentality into darkness. Together. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Not because I have the equipping in myself to do anything against evil. He says, for thou art with me. The fact that we are together, I can fail alone, but me and God cannot fail together. We have become an unbeatable, invincible team. Hmm. Yes, sir. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. Ah, I carry this consciousness 
while I look not at the things that are seen. What are the things that are seen? Defeat. What are the things that are seen? Your background. What are the things that are seen? The causes. What are the things that are seen? The failure of those who have gone ahead of you. Don't pretend they are not there. But the Bible says, while I look not. To look not means do not take, do not pay attention and allow it define your faith and conviction. I know I came from a family where no one has risen. I know I came from a family where women don't rise. Men don't rise. I come from a family of untimely death. It is true that those things are there. In my body right now may be some infirmity that the doctors have said I will never be healed from. But every time you remember that you are limited, you look at the cross. You see that? Listen, it's a mentality you must have. If not, you will live a defeated life. The ultimate price, you heard me preach this in Abuja, has been paid. There are two prices to be paid. One has been paid. The other one is what I want to teach you now. There is the price he paid. And the reason why your own price will work is because his price was paid. Work out your own salvation. But the first way is to understand what he has done. Then the understanding empowers you to do what you need to do. Ignoring the cross, ignoring the works of Jesus, ignoring that which he has done in Christ and putting yourself in the position of a savior of your own destiny, a messiah of your own destiny, immediately multiplies all your spiritual activity times zero. One million times zero is zero. Half times zero is zero. Anything times zero is zero. Are you learning now? Yes. Our generation is gradually delving into the realm of self-consciousness, self-sufficiency, and we are sincerely pushing the cross out. And then we are standing as the saviors of our own destiny. It is a recipe for defeat. Nobody wins that way. The fathers did not win that way. The patriarchs did not win that way. Everybody who walked in victory, even Jesus walked conscious of the presence of the Father through the Spirit. Even though he had to die physically, but the foundation of his work, remember Jesus is our pattern man. He did not just start with the consciousness of his being Messiah. I can of my own self do nothing. Jesus is speaking. The word speaking full of the Holy Ghost and yet he's saying I am incapacitated my strength comes from my understanding Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 says finally brethren amplified give it to us please Ephesians 6 10 finally brethren he says be strong in the Lord here's what amplified says be empowered through your union the word yes the consciousness of your union the consciousness of your union is where the grace to fast comes from. The consciousness of your union is where the grace to pray comes from. The consciousness of your union is where the grace to push through, the grace to endure. A story whose end I already know. I will. How many of you have been involved in watching movies? And you may have someone who has watched the movie before. And the person will tell you, don't mind what happens. At the end, this man you see. He will never die or he will win. That comforts you as you watch the film. No matter what happens, they will beat the man, almost kill the man, rain will be falling on the man and you say it's over. But an information you were given is what sustains you. Are we together? Listen, this is very powerful because many people do not have this consciousness. Your union with him, raised up together, raised up together my question is raised up from where you know where you were raised up to but it's important you know where you were raised up from from where called out of every tribe called out of every tongue called out of every nation you see that now called out of every curse why are you then ministering deliverance for people you just follow carefully the first thing you need is a consciousness before experience a consciousness there are two realities that came out of redemption that empower the saints 
Number one is called our positional advantage. The position in the spirit that we are seated with Christ. Raised up. Number two is the consciousness of our oneness. These are the two principal revelations that came out of redemption. Anybody who will benefit from redemption must have the consciousness of the exalted position of the believer in Christ. And then the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Can I tell you, Satan does not mind your fasting provided you don't know this. Keep fasting. Satan does not mind your dissipating energy in prayer provided you don't know this or acknowledge it. Keep doing it. Satan does not mind your giving. Carry all the money and give. It is not the ritual that produces power. It is the understanding that supports the spiritual activities. Listen, let me tell you. If many believers who engage in so many spiritual activities ever understand that this is largely what they are missing, they would take the time. You see, when God began to train us and build us, you see, our growth 101, God exposed us to men who had a thorough understanding of the finished work of Christ. That is what gave us the foundation. When we got that right, then he now graduated us into the responsibility component of the spirit life. So we began to pray and fast and build our spirits, albeit from a consciousness of his finished work. That is what gave life and still gives life to our prayer. If I speak today, I don't say it's because I prayed for two or three hours. That does not mean it is wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm coming there. But that there is a consciousness that when I speak, the consciousness of my union with Christ is where the life comes from. Are you getting this? Spirit break out. Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down hey. Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Let me tell you this One of the major reasons why believers are poor In spite of their hard work Is because we have received a narrative that ignores God Because of the presence of rich people without God And they say after all Bill Gates or so 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 and so Did not believe in God Did you walk with him to know what he believed in? Whereas Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that everything that is manifest came from a realm unseen. <laughs> Question. If I begin to have a growth on my stomach and it starts to bulge until it becomes as big as the size of a baby, where did it come from? Was it in me before? I've not eaten food that size. So where did it come from? You are not surprised at the sudden size that in two weeks, even if all the food you ate was that size, that it went and it became that big. But when it disappears, you don't believe it because you say, where did it go to? The question is, where did it come from? Most believers do not understand how close the realm of the spirit is to this physical realm. Science right now is beginning to enter the corridors of the realm of the spirit in experience. They are mastering the art of materializing spiritual things and making them manifest. You call them virtual reality. You call them metaverse. By their interaction with spirits, they are gaining an advantage now. And they are literally quantizing the realm of the spirit. And they are showing us that our reality is only a dimensional reality. That with respect to certain dimensions, it is possible that what we are calling reality does not even exist. Hmm. 
Are we learning now? This is very powerful. So most believers do not have this consciousness. And the realm of the spirit does not respect your activities provided this consciousness is not there. So here's what happens. Someone will say, look, I have business, a business idea. It must work. Huh? I have some money. I now have a job, a good job, paying 200,000, 400,000. No, I know I'm settled for life. I will build a house. Ah. <laughs> it is not of him that will it. Hmm? Not of him that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. Is that in your Bible? The psalmist said, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. There are times where everything can be fine in your life, yet the result will still not work. I have taught you this. The life of Peter after the resurrection of Jesus was a lesson for us to learn how frail men are if God does not assist them. Peter was at the sea as a professional fisherman. Talk of skill and value. He had it. He had his net and his boat. Talk of the tools needed for fishing. He had it. He was at the seaside. Talk of the correct geographic positioning. He was there. Everything required to be a great fisherman. He had it. Yet, he did not catch fish. There are times everything is right. Your certificate is correct. Your uncle is the one sitting there. The job is correct. Yet, mysteriously, it will not work. At that point, what you need is Jesus, not your mind again. Jesus comes to the seashore and he says, little children, have you any catch? He said, cast your net to the right side. Let me show you the difference between yourself and me. Hallelujah. The consciousness. So the Bible says, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee, for instance, the power to prosper. When you have the power to prosper, then when you are given the job, the job is an opportunity for you to provide value and to be a blessing. Your certificate can give you a job, but it may not make the people in that job like you. They can hate you. What happens when they hate you? Joseph was gifted, but they hated him. You see that? What do you now do about that situation? How about the man who has his job? And has been saving, obeying all financial rules. And then in one day, he's kidnapped by terrorists. And they ask him to bring the 10 million he saved. What did he do wrong? He was kidnapped by wicked people. All that savings is gone. Something that took him 10 years to save. How does he start again? Ask Noah how the earth started again. If you are an architect in the day of Noah, you will die. If you are an engineer in the day of Noah, you will die. If you were a pastor in the day of Noah, you will die. If you were a one person with great investment, you will die. The only person who was saved was the person who had God and entered that ark. Once you were not in that ark, your skill did not matter again. Your proficiency did not matter. The floods destroyed everything that did not enter that ark and took the ark. And even if you were a frog, and you had the foolishness of entering that ark, you were saved. Listen, the consciousness that I'm giving you right now is the consciousness of the fact that your knowledge of the victory in Christ and the love that Jesus has towards you is what must lead the way in your faith adventure. That is not all there is to manifesting victory, but that is the foundation. You don't move in the works of the flesh. Then later on, you now add the consciousness of the victory of Christ. You have misappropriated the positions. Arranging your consciousness properly towards victory matters. It starts with Christ. He is called Alpha. And I've taught you he only becomes Omega over what he is Alpha over. Hallelujah. In spite of all the spiritual activities that I'm involved with, prayer, fasting, giving, service, I will never put them before the cross and use them as the basis for the results. No. I have seen people who fast more than me. 
I've seen preachers who pray more than me. I've seen people who study scripture more than me. You see that? I've seen people who I believe perhaps maybe love God more than me. And some of them have not even been able to start ministry. They've gone everywhere and it did not work. It is at that point you know that the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. Are we together? Yes. So this is the consciousness you must have. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it convincingly in the name of Jesus. I carry a consciousness that I am one with Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I carry a consciousness that the victory of Christ is the basis for my victory. The victory of Christ is the basis for my walking in victory. Yes. That is a mentality you must have. So you stand before someone who is demon possessed or you stand before a situation that needs change. Before your fasting, prayer, Bible study, quoting scripture comes, I will show you how to appropriate that. You walk consciousness. The price has been paid. The price has been paid. Paid in full. The price for my healing. The price for my deliverance. The price for my excelling in ministry. Are we learning now? The price for my living a victorious life. In spite of my background, the price has been paid. The moment, let me tell you what will happen. The moment you say the price has been paid, Satan will say you are a fool. Look at your life. Does, is this how the life of someone whose price has been paid? Does, is that how? Because Satan is a master of the sense realm. Price has been paid. And until now, everybody is begging in your house. Price has been paid. And Gary, there's nothing... <laughs> There's lack and poverty. Price has been paid. And yet you are owing. Price has been paid. You are about to go to the police station. Don't fool yourself. You now reduce yourself to the realm of a carnal man. And say it is true. You are defeated immediately. Are you getting that now? It's very powerful. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. No need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Oh, man, my Listen do you know why dreams and visions are very powerful? Because God uses it to show you the future so that you can hold on to something while you become. Joseph was a young boy who was about to start his life. And that innocent boy went to sleep just like you. What did he have first? Not an encouragement, a dream. Father, I went to bed. This is what I saw. I saw my sheaves and the remaining were bowing to it. And Jacob looked at him and said, I know how God works. Something is forming in this son's destiny. Just because he saw it did not mean he became it. But he started with the dream. It was a dream he kept seeing when he was in the pit. It was a dream he kept seeing when he was in the prison. Second dream again. Because in the mouth of two or three is a matter established. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars bowing. Ah! Jacob said, I've seen it. Are you saying one day that it's in your destiny that me and your mother and your brothers will bow to you? What kind of destiny is that? And the brother said, we will kill him. Now listen, he had seen it. He didn't guarantee he would become it. He would have died in the pit. If you did not keep that dream, he would have died in Potiphar's house. He would have died of offense in the prison. Those ones were his responsibility. If Joseph never became a prime minister, the Bible will still leave the fact that he dreamt. It will still be in history that he dreamt. Joseph will suddenly get to heaven and God will say, look at your destiny. Your destiny was to be a savior. Because of you, you aborted the program. 
of God's covenant people. Listen, everything God showed you is true. But I want to show you how to make it come to pass. The you you saw on a crusade ground is true. The you you saw prophesying is true. The you you saw giving to nations is true. The you you saw building a house for your parents is true. Everything he shows you is what he wants to make happen in your destiny. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. <laughs> and 11 stars. I saw myself in a crusade ground. Yes sir. Keep the dream. I saw myself prophesying to nations. Keep the dream. I saw myself leading nations. Keep the dream. I saw myself building for the kingdom. Keep the dream. Apostle, how about my condition? This is why you are in church. Let me show you how it works. God does not lie. God cannot lie. But whether you become a manifestation of his speakings or not, it does not just depend on God. But it starts with depending on God. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Hallelujah. As many as believed him, he gave them, after believing him, power to become. As many as believed him, even to them that, it, as many as received him, even to them that believed on him, he gave them. Who are the them? Them who received him. Them who believe. They received his report. They received the dream. They received the visions. In spite of your shoe, not good, you received the vision. That you are a kingdom financier. You received it. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Pray in the spirit in one minute. And then we'll continue. Come on. Something is boiling within your spirit. Finished in Christ. Victorious in Christ. Finished in Christ. Victorious in Christ. Finished in Christ. In Christ. Complete in Him. Finished in Christ. Victorious in Christ. Pray in one minute. Rakapa rakato shabrakata balakata. Rakata praska parika pos. Embrata kata balakata vakata. Skali paraska prakata balakatos. Rakata pakata praska talakate. Reko shabenda katarasko siata. Rakata pakata praska tapalakate. Rakata pakata praska tapate. Rakata pakata balakatos. Embrata pakata prakata balakata. Victorious. Finished. Exalted. Glorified. In Christ. In Jesus name in Jesus name let's sit down hmm. 
Sit down. Are you learning? This is how to be trained to become a mighty battle axe. This is how to be trained to become a warrior for the kingdom. This is how to be trained to become invincible more than a conqueror. There is no superstition about becoming. There is a, an accurate arrangement of spiritual information that translates to power in the spirit. There is an accurate arrangement of spiritual information that translates to power. You must understand how to combine it. This is why he gave men to men. Just because you have the spiritual information does not mean you know how to use it to your advantage. Your advantage in the kingdom is not things. It's God, his spirit, light, and the ministry of men. Hallelujah. Now, let's go back to Philippians chapter 2. So we have established the fact, verse 12, we have established the fact that the approach of the believer as far as the matters of the spirit and destiny actualization is concerned, your first vantage position is the consciousness beyond the awareness, the consciousness and the conviction of what he has done. The moment you have that understanding, what gift do you receive from God as a result of having that understanding? It is called power to become. Give us that scripture. As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them power to become. Say power to become. Power, I like this. Power to become. What does that mean? The experience of the life you have now received that is deposited in your spirit is like a check that you are about to cash now. Are we together? If I sign a check of one million naira and I say, can it take? Sam, take. Are we together? What do you do with the check? You can drop it in your house. You have the consciousness of the check. Why will the bank, will the bank give you money because you trek a long distance? But you will need to trek to the bank. Am I right on that? You will need to hold the check. So while you are trekking, your energy is playing the role. But the consciousness of the check and the one who gave you is what gives you the confidence to go to the bank. Are we together? If there is no check in your hand and you trek from here to Sabo and say you must honor my trekking and honor my joining the queue, will you be given any check? Because from the foundation of the journey, you were not holding anything. The substance of your receiving is the finished work of Christ. The price you pay now is your participation. Are we together now? In making the word manifest in your life. Have you found the scripture? Power to become. John 1, 12. But as many. Do you know this statement troubled me for many years? It means not everybody will receive him. Not everybody will receive this word, unfortunately. But as many, may that many include you tonight. Yeah. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. Power to become includes the power to fast with understanding. The power to pray with understanding. The power to receive direction that focuses your destiny. Everything needed to make you become is included in the power you are given. As many as believe me, I give you a check. Within that check, are we together now? Watch this now. I have given you the check, but it's not just the check he gave you. He also gave you the power to go to the bank. Because if the only thing he gave you is a check, you can die on the way. But he is so loving that he gave you the check that will become cash but then he also gave you the empowerment. Now you understand what it means by God is at work in us. Both to will and to do. You see that? Now watch this. You need to understand this now. Let me have your attention. How come 
you carry the consciousness of this reality we just shared and yet it never makes it is not manifested in your life because most people do not understand the appropriation system of the kingdom what did i call it the appropriation system of the kingdom what does it mean to appropriate is the banking word to credit so you have a check but your account is still reflecting zero naira or 20 naira or 100 naira i'm using money so that you will understand now if i ask you you have 10,000 naira in your account and a check of 1 million how much are you worth based on that description using the cash value you are worth 1 million and 10,000 naira am i right but your account and even the banker who is banking with you will disagree with you because it is only 10,000 that is reflecting in your account but you know you are holding a check and if you talk to the banker by phone and say sir just to humbly tell you i am a million naira and 10,000 naira richer the man will say you are stupid because what you have is 10,000 it is based on engaging the banking appropriation system what is the appropriation system to make the check you are holding to reflect in your account it is only when the check reflects in your account that it can be withdrawn are you understanding this now so the challenge with many believers is we have not been taught the appropriation system of the kingdom how to convert promises to convert that which is finished in Christ finished in the spirit to be made manifest here and now this is what the Bible calls working out your own salvation with fear and trembling Joseph I do not doubt your dream it is in your destiny to be king it is in your destiny to be prime minister but young man what I forgot to tell you is that from the time you dreamt until you become prime minister is going to be a journey with many things your staying power will be based on the consciousness of that dream so scene one Joseph carries the consciousness of his dream and the father gave him I wouldn't do a teaching on that this night but the father gave him something mysterious it's called the coat of many colors not a coat of one color many colors that was the basis of his trouble something the father gave him was the reason why his trouble started there was no mention of that quote again even when he became prime minister so why did he give him the, he carried the coat of many colors and gave him the brothers saw it and they were angry he now went to get food to his brothers and they said here is the dreamer coming did you hear what they called him not here is our brother and together they unanimously agreed let us throw him into a dry pit they held him threw him spilled the blood of an animal on the same coat and sent it back to his father to say something happened to you your son a wild animal has killed him joseph cried and said my son again and yet Joseph was in the pit. Ladies and gentlemen, how does God speak to you that you are so exalted and the very next place you go to is below? Does that look like where Jesus went to? Are we together now? He went to the pit and the same brother saw the Egyptians and they said, we can make money off this guy. He's our brother. Let's not leave him to die here. At least let's sell him to the Egyptians. They called and they sold him for about 30 shekels. And he was on his way going to Egypt. Egypt is not a place that you want to go to under normal circumstances. And so God began to lead him through that situation. Watch the journey of Joseph. I'm sure Joseph will say, God, but I don't understand this dream I'm having. If you understand the systems of God, the appropriation system of the kingdom is where faith is required. Because for a major part of the journey, you will not understand what God is doing. So you are mandated to know and believe that all things work together. You see what it means to be a believer? For the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purpose. So Joseph gets to Egypt. Watch this now. And the Bible tells us that whilst in the house of Potiphar as a slave, 
the favor of God was upon him. He began to distinguish him. If I were Joseph, I would say, wow, at least a breath of fresh air. Things are beginning to improve. That improvement brought him trouble. Potiphar's wife came with her own again. Are we together now? And all the drama that happened between him and Potiphar's wife finally landed him to prison. Ah, by that point, Joseph would have said, no, it's enough. God, carry the star I saw. Carry the moon I saw. Eleven stars, go with it. Allow me to live my destiny. But he was in that prison. The Bible does not tell us how long he stayed. We know that he stayed X plus two years. That X we don't know. Two years was added as a result of that her man. The guy who, the wine presser, who refused to help him, although he was still part of God's program. Because if he had helped him at that time, he would have been restored to Potiphar's house, not exalted. The king's dream was necessary as a timing for his coming out. Hallelujah. So he's in the prison. I'm sure that he would be having dreams in the night. Jacob is crying. The brother started by laughing, but by now, it's more than 12 years and the guilt in their heart. We sold our brother. Perhaps he's dead now. And then Joseph is there. Watch how prophecy is playing. I saw the sun, the moon, 11 stars. The appropriation system of the kingdom. The Bible says one night he looked at the countenance of the wine presser, the butler. And he said, ah, you don't look happy. What is wrong? And they said, we have dreamt dreams. He said, tell me the dream. He interprets the dream of the baker and says, oh dear, sad interpretation. In three days, the king will call you. They will finally conclude on your case. They will hang you and the birds will feed on your flesh. And the other guy said, me too. And he said, in three days, the king will reinstate you back to your place of honor. And he made a request. He said, please, when you get there, this is the danger of looking unto men. God uses men. But help does not come from men. Help comes through men from God. Please, now that you have secured the king's attention, I'm the one who prophesied to you. As you get there, please, advocate my innocence. Let the king know I'm innocent. The Bible says the guy went there and forgot. Don't blame him. He was part of prophecy. Then after two full years, are we Bible students now? Read your Bible. Oh. After two years, the Bible says two full years. Pharaoh now dreamt. When Pharaoh dreamt, he saw all that he saw. And that day the heavens were shut over all the astrologers, the necromancers, the wise men of Pharaoh. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. Pharaoh, if you will give me a chance to speak. Once upon a time we were in prison and I had a dream. And a young man came and gave the interpretation. And Pharaoh said immediately, go and fetch him. Joseph did not know that the night he slept before would be the final night. Not just as, a, oh my God, do you know the days of manifestation, bah? You will not, it won't look like it. Who knows, maybe this is someone's final night. Final night. Final night in that state. Final night in that level in the spirit. There is always a one day for everything. Read your Bible. It will say, and on a certain day, something happened. Saul did not know that the last day before his meeting Samuel will be the last day in that realm. And Samuel said, come. Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? Hallelujah. Even Jesus had a one day on earth. He had a final night in hell. When he resurrected triumphant. And they shaved him. According to the custom of the Egyptians. And they brought him before the king. And the Bible says. The king now said here is my dream. And he said let the king state his dream. God will give the king an answer of peace. And the king begins his dream. At the end of the dream Joseph said. The dream that you saw is one. It is because what God has planned to do is established. And he told him the dream. And now began to profess solutions. Let Pharaoh look for a man so discreet and wise. Set him over the economic affairs of Egypt. To save 20% of everything within the seven years. So that when there is famine, 
Egypt will have enough to eat and also sell. And the king said, for as much as God has revealed this to you, there is no man so discreet and wise. This moment, he set him as Lord. Can you imagine the exaltation of Pharaoh? I mean, of Joseph is something that is scary. And he beat his chest and said, I am Pharaoh. And that it is only in the office that you'll be greater than me. You are officially the administrative head of Egypt. No interview, no nothing. And the Bible says they took him and they cursed him. They gave him, they changed his name. Zafnath Pania. That was the Egyptian name they gave him. And then the Bible says they gave him the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, to marry her. And he became prime minister in a moment. One moment. When that happened, that scene had finished though. The next thing was that in Genesis chapter 42 from verse 1 and 2, the Bible says hunger struck the earth. Now the famine had started. I hope you know his exaltation was not yet the dream manifest because the dream saw the sun, moon and 11 stars. This manifestation was just him seated in that position. The bowing is about to start. The bowing started with hunger. When Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, he gathered his sons and said, why do you look you one to another? He said, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt, verse 2. Go down Peter and buy for us so that we will live and not die. That was what took them to Egypt. Forward march, they went. And when they got to Egypt, the Bible says, as soon as Joseph saw them, he knew they were his brothers. And he said, you know what? Carry my golden cup. That young boy called Benjamin, that is my real brother. Put the cup there. I want to disguise a way of bringing them. And in, by that time, they had repented. They were now, I'm sure their conscience, they were now a lot older. And they were on their way going and the chariot stopped them and said, the king has asked that we summon you. Someone has stolen his cup. They said, well, no, we can't do this. And they checked everything. And the next thing they found the cup in the grain of Benjamin and they say ah you've committed treason against the king all of you and Benjamin could how did this happen he said well all of you go back but Benjamin will stand they say please he did that for a reason because they were brothers he said we've lost the one his elder brother we cannot afford to take this report back our father would die he said so where is your father he said all right let Reuben stay let one stay go back go and bring your father and when they went he, were, he was looking at them before they would go. They, they, they were surprised. What is all this report now? You want to pierce us? Cut the long story short. He looks at them and says, I am Joseph. <laughs> the same way you would tell many people, I am that prayer warrior that was behind my one room praying. Yes, sir. I am that Hadassah, the village girl in Shushan. Don't mistake in the queen you see today. It is still the same person. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In your lifetime, you will see the visions God has shown you come to pass. <laughs> Sit down. Let me finish the story. He looks at them and embraces them. And he said, they felt sad. They bowed before him like he saw. And he said, rise, I am your brother. Don't worry. All the ritual of me being one of the prime ministers. And he greeted them. Watch this. He said, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Is my father alive? Are my people alive? He said, go and bring them. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for One more time. Good. Hey, you take what the enemy you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Are we together? I hope you know that was how the nation of Israel were saved until joseph died and another pharaoh came and they became captives for 430 years like god showed abraham it will happen 
and then Moses now shows up many 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 centuries after and brings them out but he said something profound before Joseph died and I want you to listen Joseph said one day I will be no more but the nation of Israel as you go out of here take my bones with you bones talk of structure bones talk of strategy as you leave I know it meant take my bones physically but it also means the strategy that brought you here understudy my story find within it a strategy that you will use for your journey that every time God speaks to you there is a process of appropriation the strategy of Joseph the bones of Joseph if you only enjoy what happened in Egypt and you live without carrying the bones it will still happen to you the strategy of Joseph was still used on their journey because Moses said thus said the Lord God of Hebrews let my people go that they may go and serve me and to serve me in a land flowing with milk and honey many of them forgot the strategy of Joseph that's why they built idols on the way through frustration and in that whole generation only Joshua and Caleb arrived the remaining people perished in the wilderness Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 let us fear less a promise give it to us media let's work together let us therefore fear less a promise being left of entering into his rest that any of you should seem come to come short of it verse 2 the bible says for unto us the gospel was preached what was the gospel the gospel the message of liberation exodus this is not just talking he's talking about the nation of israel as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it when you read on it says there remaineth a rest for God's people it says let us therefore labor labor everybody say labor labor, labor to enter it is true that there is a rest verse 9 now I think labor to enter that rest give us verse 9 just go to verse 9 let us therefore labor to enter death there remained therefore a rest to the people of god verse, verse 10 for he that is entered into his rest i think that should be 11 or 12. okay 11. let us labor therefore everybody say labor therefore this is where fasting comes in this is where prayers come in are we together this is where consecration comes in this is where giving comes in. This is where service comes in. That is the labor dimension of faith so that you will enter the experience of that rest. Now, if you stay and say, I have seen it. Christ has done everything. You are right. But you may never enter that experience. So, every time I give myself to prayer, give myself to fasting, give myself to the word, what am I doing? I am aligning myself so that I will become that person who will become a manifestation of that which is finished in Christ. Did you get that now? Back to our example of the check. I have a check of a million naira, but the bank is say first bank in Samaru. I start working from here. And sometimes by the time I get to the turnover there, I can be tired. But I remember, I am laboring to enter rest. Are we together? The consciousness of my check. If you see me on the way and you are laughing at me, what I am holding becomes too big, bigger than your distraction. And so you continue. Are we together? Notice all the processes from the time you receive the check to when you enter the bank. You will trek. You may greet people. You may ask people to direct you. You get into the bank and then you hand over the check to a cashier. He looks at it and smiles at you and does a few things. There are times you've done everything. Just wait. Everything to be done is done. You will get up with anxiety and say, how many minutes does it take to catch this thing? They said, there's something beyond your realm now. There are verifications. We have to verify whether the money is in that account. They won't tell you. you there are places in the check that are for official use. That one is not for you again. You see them signing, calling, and dropping, taking it to the operations manager because maybe the amount. 
And while all that is happening, they bring it back. And you are just sitting angry. And the devil is saying, walk out of this bank. Some of you, just when they are about to finish, you walk out. And they say, where is the person to sign finally? You are no longer there. You wasted your 10 years of fasting and prayer through unbelief. I hope you are not just excited. You are learning something here. There are people who wait there. And sometimes, unfortunately, they can tell you there's network problem. Hmm. So how long will I wait? We don't exactly know. But we have confirmed that there is money there. So what do you do? You wait. You wait. And waiting, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes means waiting. It's not a prophetic message. Waiting. You wait. Someone will come and see you and say, ah, I was here in the morning. It's 3.30 now. And you are still at the bank. What are you doing here? Are you sure they didn't scam you? Wait. Someone is at this phase right now. Haven't done all to stand. Stand. Haven't done all to wait. Wait. Because shortly, you are about to see the manifestation of the word of God. Finally, they call you and say, okay, congratulations. And you tell the person, I want to withdraw everything now. It's your money. It's your money. Whether you withdraw 100,000 or the whole 1 million or 200,000, immediately the man is at your service. Somebody who five minutes ago was sitting quietly, five minutes later, and say, what is the most expensive restaurant in Zaria? The check finally has found its way to your account. You square up and when you stand, you call a bike. If you waste your time, call another one. If you waste your time, call Kekenape. Pay for the other seats. Sit alone. Let us therefore labor. So what are you doing coming to the house of God now? It's like a register you are signing in the spirit every day. Are we together? Yes. Koinonia worship team and you say present every week. There is a signing of the register. Koinonia prayer department present. Every week you are here line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. And some persons will look at you and say we've graduated three years now just to let you know that I've gotten a job in an oil and gas company I hear you are still in Zaria now for you I pray that God will help you and you feel stupid remember you are in the bank remember you are in the bank you are praying Father use me for your glory use me for your glory day turns to night one day turns to one week and you are serving it may not make sense and one day you have your small 10,000 and God says to give it and you are saying God to give it again is because part of the dream you saw there was a kingdom financier there and the seed is a memorial you are raising in the spirit to make this manifest listen carefully one day you will be sitting quietly and an oil and gas company will call you somewhere and say, are you so, 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 and so? Come. Are you this person, that person? Come. Hallelujah. Are you this one, that person? Come. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you have stepped into certain dimensions of grace. Listen. Everything I just told you now is a prophetic experience of my story, your story, the story of everybody you admire. It is called the appropriation system of the kingdom. Knowing therefore that there is a great destiny ahead of you, you obtain grace to labor in the spirit. What are the elements of that labor? One, your prayer. Your prayer life. What are the elements of that labor? Number two, effective word study. What are the elements of that labor? Your fasting. Are you writing your prayer your word study your fasting what are the elements of that labor your service in the house of god what are the elements of that labor your giving giving of yourself your substance your energy what are the elements of that labor waiting the stamina to stay 
until God's word is delivered over your life. What is the element of that waiting? Endurance. That sometimes it may not make sense, but you endure. What is the element of that, of that labor? Submitting yourself methodically to mentorship for the purpose of structured learning. All of that are the elements of your labor. Knowing that one day you will reap if you do not faint. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. What you call koinonia today, what you call this vision by the privilege of God's grace, even as a ministry submitted itself to this appropriation system, the business God wants to build through you will have to pass through that phase. The ministry God wants to build will have to pass through that phase. Hear me? That prophetic anointing, that evangelistic anointing, that apostolic anointing, it will pass through this system. Just because God said it does not mean you walk in the experience. Hallelujah. Are we together? The process of becoming. Now, not to get her emotional, I was so touched. I looked at her and while she was worshipping, the assistant music director, I remember during the concert, it was just maybe days or weeks after she lost her child. And yet she stood and was worshipping with faith. As I was watching her singing today, the anointing that came out, I said, this is it. Something happens to men when they pass through the furnace of affliction. Pleasing men no longer matters. At that point, you have died a thousand times to yourself, to your ego. It is from the scars that power flows. Are you getting this now? But the beautiful thing with God is every tears you cry, there is a compensation system by the time everything happens. What money could you give Joseph as a prime minister? What honor could you give him again? everything the salary that he missed for all those years was rewarded in one day one day one day everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be Zaria, hear me. God wants to produce champions. There should never be a generational gap. As God is sending others, God is recruiting others. Did you hear what I said? As God is sending others, never should Zaria lack prayer warriors. Never should Zaria lack prophetic voices, apostolic voices, but you are in the training. You are not the first to be without food. Don't kill yourself and let the devil speak as if there's an unusual attack. Some of us said there's something unusual. It's a lie. It's unusual to you. There is nothing <laughs> unusual that you didn't eat. You are joking. People give thanks in the midst of hunger. What is unusual about that? There is no temptation but such as is common to men. But with every temptation, God will provide a way of escape. Jaira. You see that? He said God himself will provide a lamb. With every temptation, he will provide a way of escape. If there is no food, rejoice in that hunger and keep your hunger as a memorial. The anointing will flow through it tomorrow. The anointing for compassion. The day you see someone and he says, I've not eaten, you will remember. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity that is the definition of compassion the ability to be touched i was once there this is why he still makes intercession for the saints god as god even though he was almighty he could not claim to have an experience of the state of man he needed to come and become a man so today when he sees there you say i know that preacher i know that young lady i know what it means to come out from a family like nazareth where nothing good can come out of and he can make intercession. It is on account of that high priestly duty that his mercies, he can appropriate his mercies, he can encourage you while you rise. But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. 
there is nothing unusual about the pain you are going through on your way to greatness I'm giving definition to the process you are going through are we together now don't see everything as an attack it is a, the appropriation system of the kingdom there are times where it is a demonic attack but I tell you for many believers in many regards it is not an attack we have this mindset that just because God said it overnight somebody should give me a house in one day by the next day give me a car by the next day send me to US then you say God is faithful no you will not be a soldier that way hallelujah everybody you see including the person talking to you run away from people who do not have a story of this appropriation system for some of you now you want to have bought a glorious story that God is writing you God has had to teach you faith in the school of the spirit now you are in faith 301 one week no money yet you have not begged for bread keep learning something God is teaching you is how money will come to build the ministry in the future if you miss that lecture by the time it's time to build the ministry, you will not need 20 naira like you need for food. You will need heavy resources. So pass through that school and let him teach you how to tap into the mystery of divine supplies. Hallelujah. There are some of you right now, you have found yourself face to face with challenging situations. Don't cry. It is through that situation you will learn how to pray. Prayer that works. The situation is teaching you to test whether your prayer works or not until a situation stands before you how do you know your prayer is working hallelujah so you may have been bragging I'm a prayer warrior here comes a mountain before you pray it away <laughs> you will try everything you know to do at the end of amen the mountain still looks at you and then God with it humbles you and says come to the school of prayer and learn how prayer moves mountains it is not just by shouting to the mountain there is something the mountain wants to hear if it does not hear it will remain disobedient no matter how long you are praying are we together when you learn that you pray with every skill you know the mountain does not move one day in your frustration and pain you will stumble across a message you will stumble across a book you will be fasting for two three days god will give you one dream together you will build a formula it is with that you will stand before people one day maybe you'll be doing your own miracle service and you will tell the people that every mountain here will move they will think you are joking they don't know the pain that taught you the experience of how to move mountains when you honor people it's not human worship you are honoring the labor the sacrifice of alignment many people had to learn God experientially because when you study the Bible it looks too simple till you start obeying did you hear what I said mm. and God said and he saw and you just get happy I want to say and then it doesn't happen I say oh, oh wait that means between what he said and what he saw there are many things that only the spirit can open your eyes to see he's the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God He's the Holy Ghost Scepter of the King of Kings He's the Holy Ghost Seal of the age to come He's changing everything In obedience to Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. I like that song. Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here, a little there. Then your day will dawn, he's at work in you, changing everything in obedience to God. So why does someone speak to you and say in the name of Jesus, let the doors of your destiny open. And then for one, the door opens. And for another, the door does not open. One is holding a check. 
the other one has deposit in his account one just read eh, that you will speak over men and thou shalt decree a thing that is a good starting point but you run around with a check life will frustrate you as if you are not holding a check you need to learn the appropriation system of the kingdom i'm saying this because there are some of you who don't pray you don't fast you are saying why do i need to do this the price has been paid remaining your own price there is the price and your price it is the union of the price and your price that equals results hallelujah are we together solomon already dedicated the jerusalem temple and there was a covenant there that everyone who faced it would have answers to prayer and yet daniel had to turn there to pray experientially and for that he went to the lions then but he had mastered the art of prayer and it brought him victory that lions could not touch him the fire had no power over the three hebrew boys listen ladies and gentlemen in this end time there is a destiny call not just a call for men of god a call for people who have seen prophecy and are about to start the journey to becoming the journey to becoming you will cry don't be ashamed of your tears the journey to becoming will leave you lonely many times you may start as a crowd but you will get to a point where what god needs to teach you must be taught to you alone so he will take everybody there like jacob he will leave you alone are we together at that point your helper will not be there at that point your sponsor will not be there and you said god called you to be a kingdom millionaire if the only thing you have been reading is financial books <laughs> let me tell you everything god calls you inside to do the first thing is he will pass you through something that will make you know him before he gives you whatever the journey should give you the first thing you get in that journey is the knowledge of god before the power to get wealth so if you like say i don't want to do ministry my own is money god said it doesn't matter provided he's the one leading you a major part of the training will be the knowledge of him before you will later find money he won't stop he won't stop till you look just like him he won't stop no he won't stop till you look just like him he won't stop, he won't stop, till you look just like him. He won't stop, he won't stop, till you look just like him. I once met a gentleman and he wanted an impartation. What was the impartation for? He wanted impartation, you know, for extraordinary dimensions in ministry and all of that. And I told him there is a place for prayer. But let me tell you the truth most of what people receive that they call impartation is the hunger of the one imparting them not the grace because there are some wells that cannot be transferred you will only receive the grace and the, to be hungry it is the result of a journey not every anointing is transferable no you see that now if every anointing were transferable spiritual activities would be useless because it then means in one day all i need to do is labor through everything and give you and whether you are ready or not there is a kind of believer you need to become to carry certain anointings and until you have become that believer even if hands are laid that grace will be suspended waiting till the day you align to become that vessel it doesn't mean the impartation is false but the first thing that is transferred to you is the hunger first the hunger makes you then the grace will fall and if it takes 10 years that grace will be suspended yet moving with you like a cloud but it will never rest because you have not yet become that kind of man now hear me there are many of you here god is calling you tonight and he's saying have you not seen the kind of person i want to make out of your life it is true that christ has finished everything but the way you are now you cannot become that prophet the way you are now that grace the apostolic grace the prophetic grace you can graduate yourself by yourself and you will find out that life does not recognize you and the realm of the spirit does not recognize you jesus i know paul i know who are you 
we're about to pray and the prayer is going to be threefold number one is going to be the grace to pay your price working out your salvation for some of you by reason of what you have heard tonight you will need to decongest the activities in your life and at this point in your life there are many things you should not be thinking about you are too young to be wasting your time disturbing yourself with certain things life is a journey and at every journey there are emphasis are we together now somebody who comes through 100 level and all he's thinking about is marriage relationship and money most likely that person will not become a great person because there is the god has emphasis for every season the first thing he does is he calls you to know him he starts pruning you breaking you making you when certain things are in place he will have to be the one to distract you away into other aspects of the training because you will be so focused on what he's doing one day he will tell you there are other things so all i've shown you is not all there is he said that you are bound in this grace also there are other graces you have gotten the one for prayer you have gotten the one for fasting in addition god will now say for the next three months i want to teach you on relationships you say but god is are relationships necessary he will just say walk with me let me show you then for the next four months he will be teaching you on demons the activity of evil spirits you will see a demonic occurrence around your life you will shout in jesus name and it will not go you have entered a new class in the spirit there's something god wants to show you you will wake up from a dream and pass for three days as you are wrapping up the fast the demon will oppress you again it will now make you respect victors in the spirit what have they known hmm. that hunger will make you to now go and search i have given you authority and power over snakes and scorpions but lord why did i speak over this spirit and your brother tells you it's still oppressing but you say no i am out of every course but you are clearly seeing that you are still seeing yourself in secondary school you are still seeing yourself doing all of this you said in jesus name i reject this and went to bed you continued the journey in the secondary school you now get up and that's when you will know that that which is finished in christ and that which is manifest are two different things now you begin to study one day god will show you a secret and when you find it that devil like it happened to me many years ago it will live forever now out of the abundance of the light you have you can liberate others are we together then after that you now go to the next class in the spirit the school of prosperity assignment number one empty your account no 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 this cannot be god if you are god make somebody pass two people will pass if you are god let somebody send an alert an alert will come god what are you doing with me and you will think the moment you give by the next day breakthrough will come nothing will happen god where are you going with me follow carefully i want to show you something and then we'll pray so you started from your revelation and watch the transitions in the various classes of the spirit when you pass you have not gone you are still coming back home don't think that once you pass that's all there are higher levels of the same knowledge you will still come to like you do math 101 then there's math 201 there's 301 so when you do 101 you have not finished you are finished for now later you'll come back again but you see for every step you are taking through that school something is happening to you the name is glory the glory of god is being revealed in you you may start as an ordinary brother but because you are exercising these spiritual things one day someone will start looking at you and they'll say please can you lead small prayer one group of five people can you help us wrap up that prayer that is the day you will know the kind of glory that was hiding in you and you just say okay let's pray I want to share a scripture for when I am weak there he is strong and you will hear yourself speaking things that were not part of your Bible study then you will know what the Bible calls utterance when Paul prays that utterance be given so this thing is beyond rehearsal there is a grace that causes men to speak 
you see you are learning at the end of that five minutes prayer everybody comes and says we want to get the little download of it and you are wondering just when you want to become proud God says yes let's go back that was just a spiritual IT and you continue with God until you become like Joseph who now becomes Pharaoh one day you will have your own ministry and somebody will say were you not one who was in worship team in Koinonia and you will say yes say you have changed you say it's true what happened I am what I am by the grace of God but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than you all <laughs> then you will see power that flows beyond your sermons you will see power that flows beyond speaking when you stand in a meeting like this and see the glory of God cover people you will first start by laying hands on one person first before they receive you may not have that kind of power to stand from one position and things are happening everywhere but you are growing that's why the arrogance and the disrespect of this our generation is why many people never can get into power God exalts men in the spirit and the results show it's a testament of number one his sacrifice plus your sacrifice that is how to work out your salvation are you learning now so you empty your account and after two weeks you don't have food to eat you almost fast for one day and God is watching your response just when you want to be offended the Spirit of God will take you to the scripture where he says Simon by Jonah lovest thou me more than this that is the day you will pray and consecrate yourself and say Lord beyond money whether I have food or not I will never leave you for the rest of my life immediately you pray that prayer somebody will say God led me to give you a hundred thousand God will say it's not that I cannot bless you I'm helping you become a certain kind of person that whether you have abundance or not it does not affect your relationship tomorrow God can say give me your car and you say yes sir give me this support send 10 million naira to that crusade happening and you will say yes sir because you were trained in the school of the spirit I fear for anyone who does not pass the school of the spirit they are dangerous especially to lead men you don't have anything to teach people just because you can open the Bible and talk does not mean life will be communicated from what you are saying oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear will you speak from your throne and I'll hear from the earth oh speak from the heavens and the earth will hear from my altar is calling for oh God. My worship is calling for oh God. My sacrifice is calling for oh God. Take my praise for oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Hey, let the fire from your altar touch my body. Yeah, 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 Let the fire from your altar touch me. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. 
Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place. hear me today by the grace of God it is on the strength of number one what Jesus has done but number two our participation that today he can send us to the nations today he can send us to the nations he can send us to the US Canada UK and all across we are able to do much for Jesus today I was telling my dear people in a matter of hours after we opened doors for registration for international conferences both for US Canada everywhere an auditorium of 14,000 people became packed full in a matter of days and now we have a problem of space it is not because it is now that Jesus spoke he spoke before I was born but it was when our alignment became complete in righteousness we are able to do much for the kingdom today without begging without borrowing because the days we're crying and learning in the school of wealth and prosperity we pass through with diligence now by the grace of God he has helped us to know how to hold the sword and that with that sword you can bring down 800 people and the sword will cleave to your hands let the fire from your altar touch my body let the fire from your altar touch my body Let the fire from the old altar touch my body. Hallelujah. I instructed Victor my protocol. I said, Victor, as we come down to Zaria, go to everywhere in Zaria that was a signature point of my training. I want you to snap it. Everywhere. Everywhere I had encounters with God. Everywhere I hear to pray and fast, I want you to snap it. I want to keep it as a memorial. So that the days you see it, you will help to train others too. And say it was in Bethel, I met God. Listen, do not be afraid of your training. When you see the things that God is doing with us, don't just clap for Joshua Selman. Let it inspire you too that God can put things in men that can make men become like gods. Every training you are going through now, some of you are in the school of prosperity, stay there with God. Some of you are in the school of prayer, stay there with God. Some of you are in the school of patience, stay there with God. Some of you are in the fullness of affliction, allow it to roast away the flesh that is there. You will be praying, God, take this cup off me. And you will say, no. There are times you don't come out of the fire. He sends grace into the fire to help you endure. There is something the fire needs to burn. It needs to burn flesh. It needs to burn pride. Don't say, no, flesh has gone. You are joking. You don't know what flesh is. Stay in that fire and let it make you before you tear your destiny in the future. There are times you can go for a meeting full of yourself and nothing will happen in that meeting. You will forget all your verses. Oh, God is going to move here. And God says, I didn't speak to you. You wrap up the meeting like a funeral. And God said it was not to embarrass you. It's to let you learn what it means to be sufficient in Christ. Let's continue the school of the training. The training in the spirit. After you are embarrassed, somebody will even send you a text. 
and say, I notice you are backsliding. Pray. And God said, don't reply. Don't reply. I inspired that to challenge you. Shabi, you say you have died to flesh. You see how anger is coming alive. So God will say, let's get to work. The school of character. And then God begins. Anger 101. He deals with it. Pulls it out. Look, let me tell you. It is beautiful to see a vessel that has been worked on by God. Our generation is anointing conscious. Power conscious. But not training conscious. We hate the dealings of the spirit. But we want the glory that is produced from those dealings. I want to stand and let people just be falling under the anointing. I want to stand and let people just call me. Apostle, whoever you are. Prophet, whoever you are. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. We're about to pray. And let there be no distraction. Because something is going to rest upon you as we pray. I want you to cry to the Lord. It's time for glory to be revealed through my life. Whatever school in the spirit I need to pass through, whatever journey I need to start with the spirit that will help me appropriate that which is finished in Christ and make it manifest in my life, I release myself towards it. Go ahead and begin to pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Hear me. I can literally name people one by one. And tell you their experience with God. And tell you some of the things that has happened to them. One by by one if you don't believe God exalts go and think again there are people some of these my dear people today many years ago some of you were not here but some of you were here you saw them labor like madmen like foolish people perhaps others looked at them and laughed at them and said you are going nowhere and they continued faithfully today God has honored them God has lifted them one by one lifting them to the nations the things that people are looking for he's carried and given them as a gift because i taught you yesterday presence has value ask terrorists a terrorist will become a millionaire because he stole one person for two days if you can trap a presence for two days and become 10 million richer what if god gives you his presence hallelujah I hear the mighty things that God is doing in their lives today and I am overjoyed. Great things. Some of these people you see today, the things God has done in their life, you will not believe it. I watch them one by one from the worship team to media, one by one. And God has enlisted some of us now. Some of you have joined it. Make sure you don't just graduate yourself through pride. Are we together? Tomorrow is Benga's wedding. I didn't even know he was going to be here. <laughs> He's smiling and warming up for his wedding tomorrow. This guy, for 10 years, he was the head of prayer here. And he missed in 10 years, I think it's just once, that he missed service. Faithfulness. Last year, in a few months, God gave him a lecturing job. And within three or four months, he became head of department of engineering till today in three months whoever told you that when you serve god he does not honor you you are joking think again except it's not the god of the bible allow him train you some of these my dear people today you see them all over the nations uk this one wherever and you are one is not you cannot promote yourself it's god that promotes men I'm saying this because you are going to pray for the staying power. Lord, the grace to continue with you. Go ahead and pray. How I love to worship you. How I love to stand for you. 
And even though it hurts me For every step I take Even though it pains me For every move I make But I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I love you I can never ever do without you How I love Keep praying to worship you And how I love to stand for you And even though it hurts me For every step I take Even though it pains me For every move I make ah. But I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I love you I can never ever do without you Father the grace to pass through the school of the spirit the grace to endure the grace to trust you whilst the word is made manifest in my life Koinonia take a minute to pray you are becoming in Christ you are becoming in power you are becoming in grace it does not yet appear what we shall be like hallelujah hear me beyond your desire for money allow God train you money is part of the package in your destiny beyond your desire for power allow God train you beyond your desire for marriage children husband wife allow him train you beyond your desire for fame allow him train you allowing God train you is the fastest way for prophecy to become wishing and just saying God do it now that's not how it works work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for as long as I live I will not graduate from the school of the spirit every training that I need part time at every level there is a training God is building can I tell you this allow God finish what he is doing in you the training of Esther is not the same training as Ruth. Their destinies are different. Don't compare yourself with people and say, I started. Eh? By now I should have a car. By now I should have a house. By now I am too big to stay in one small room. Then it means you are too big to receive the anointing destined for you. Allow God to do what he's doing. By now there should be a man in my life who is ready to go and see my parents? If a husband does not come by February, God is not faithful. Ah, be careful. Don't curse yourself and destroy your destiny. Allow God to walk what is working in you. Hallelujah. Joseph saw the dream, but between the dream he saw and its manifestation, there was a journey. A journey to becoming before having don't stretch your hand to God stretch your heart to him let him change your heart change your life then everything can come into your hand hallelujah please hear me as we wrap up tonight I don't want you to forget this message for the rest of this year because many of us what you are praying about will not come now Pray in tongues and build your spirit. Stop harassing God in the place of prayer. If you are God, I give you one week. You promise that is your will for me to do this. What is there? I'm trusting God for a two-bedroom flat. 
so that I will turn one room into a prayer room. You think God is stupid? Turn your one room there to a prayer room. You don't need AC to pray. You need zeal and passion. Don't harass God and try to manipulate his hand. Many believers think that God is a politician that they can just manipulate. Some person, you may listen to a man of God who is 30 years in ministry telling you he's trusting God for $10 million, $1 million and you stand up right where you are just because you had a dream and you entered a room with plenty of money. Number one, go and meet a man of God to help you interpret what that thing means. Money does not mean money. Money can mean anything. Treasure. Are we together? But even if it's money, you think you'll step into it immediately? I remember years when I had a vision and the encounter that came from that vision that was showing that God, it was in our destiny to work in certain levels of finances. Do you know how many years from that vision before God's mercy began to speak on that wise? Some of the things you call oppression is you hurrying God. And the grace that will make you walk in ease is not there. So you will keep struggling until you meet divine timing and you call it breakthrough. When you hurry God, he will not force you because he gave you a will. But the casualties you will face, you are trying to carry a load that is bigger than your capacity in the spirit. Hallelujah. This is what some of you are doing. For some of you, you need to reduce your prayer point. Because most of what is in that prayer point is supposed to be answered by growth. If you grow in the spirit, you will keep ticking those prayer points like that. So at your level, what you should be doing now is just enter the place of prayer. Have your goals, have your dreams, but you are praying in the spirit. That your three hours prayer is 90% praying in the spirit. You are building capacity. Don't say, God, give me one billion. God loves you. He doesn't want you to die. Can you survive the temptations that come when you hold one billion? Or you think you just hold one billion and the devil will greet you? When God gives you one billion, before the one billion enters your hand, he will connect you with lawyers. He will connect you with friends. He will connect you with relationships that can defend that level of growth. Because there are attacks that follow every level of growth. And he will need to surround you with the fortification systems that help you maintain what he has given you. Are we together? So there are people who are just praying blindly. Show us one of the venues for our conference, please, if you can. Let me just use this to wrap up. Now, I'm showing you this as a family just to inspire you. It would be stupid if years ago I would just stand up. Some of the things that I'm preaching now, I've been preaching it years ago. It is more powerful now because I have become today greater than I was yesterday. You see, this is a venue for UK. Now, listen, glory be to Jesus, but I'm just showing you this. Do you know how much financial resources I was telling the workers it takes to have a place like this? This kind of thing can make you worry till they admit you in the hospital. Are we together? Yeah. What other place again? You are doing three global conferences and planning for all of them at the same time. You are not begging. You are not borrowing. The resource, listen, listen. The resources, you are not manipulating people. But it's one thing to have money. How about the grace that brings the people there? There is a grace that brought all the animals into the ark of Noah. Until God trains you and shows you. If you think just because you preach well, people will come. Get ready to be disappointed. Do you know what it means to run a global conference like this? You must study the policies that govern the use of large auditoriums in every room. You must have insurance policies. There are many other things. There are levels of global relationships you must have. This is the school of the spirit. I'm saying it, I'm showing you this. Is this the only one you have? My dear people, I thought any other one you have. I'm saying this to inspire someone. This is for US now. And do you know, listen, 
I'm saying this to the glory of God. So this auditorium takes 14,000 people and it's exhausted. We most likely may have to use another editorium. The one in Canada, we've had to apply for 5,000 extra people. I'm not saying this, I'm saying this to you because there is some young man somewhere that is becoming and until you see this, your pride now is about to kill you and God is using this meeting to say, you are anointed but calm down. Just because you prayed and two people fell in your fellowship, be careful. This journey is still far. It takes more than Greek and Hebrew words. There is an accreditation system in the spirit and you must ascend by grace until you get to a point where you can handle weightier matters in the kingdom. It takes more than money. Media, there's no other, if there is none, then shut it down, please. You people are distracting us. I thought you have one or two venues. If there is none, then that's all. Hallelujah. But this, for instance, is an example of what God can do. This whole journey started from this same Zaria, your Zaria. So don't give any excuse. It's not somebody that was trained somewhere and came. Right here, we had our failures here. It was open and everybody saw it. We went to our crusades here. It was open and everybody saw it. We could not pay money. 150,000 naira. You would have called that defeat. But that was a training in the school of the spirit. Those days, our ladies were in worship team, welfare team, any team you join, your own, just make it work. <laughs> See that? Prayed and fasted. And our ushering department alone were more than all the people who came for the crusade. Can you imagine that? You pray and fast and transport yourself almost to death and you arrive at a venue and there are just a handful of people. But you preach. And then you now preach and there were miracles but you were owing. Imagine the sound people who were there hearing you shout and say Jesus saves, Jesus can lift and you are owing them. The crusade was done, finished. And you are saying you have an unusual challenge. It's a lie. You don't have any unusual challenge. That is how champions are trained. Find strength. Don't let the devil fool you. Your problem is not unusual. We finish and the money to even pay the drivers that return the team. We had to last with the drivers that by the time they get to main gates here, their money will be waiting for them. Don't be discouraged. Today we are doing great things for the kingdom. To the glory of his name we are writing our story remaining your own my assignment is to stand as a prophetic midwife and help you to show you that it is possible in christ if god could do it in our lives from our humble beginnings then god can do it everywhere are we together today god has carried the prayer point of many 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 destinies and has given this ministry as a gift can i tell you one last prayer point I want you to cry and say everything that would distract me pride flesh whatever it is that would distract me from becoming father cut it away from me go ahead and pray go ahead and pray whatever will distract me take away pride Take away an arrival mentality. Take this last prayer point seriously. Everything that will distract me from working out my salvation by faith, with patience, with endurance, with obedience cut it from my life oh, my season has come oh, my season has come Oh, 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 my help has come. Oh, 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 
my help has come oh, oh, oh my time has come oh, 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 oh my time has come I, 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 Ebenezer, my help has come. Oh, 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 my season has come. Oh, 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 oh. my season has come. Balansha la baraco sabra de gebeleco shavras cabaratus. Rata balase beleketa pras cabaratus yata. Becoming by the spirit, evolving by the spirit, working out your salvation by the spirit. Work out your own salvation. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember everything I've taught you today. Having built on the foundation of the victory that can only be found in Christ. Call his prize for your destiny. Your next assignment is to begin to engage submitting to the school of the spirit working out your own salvation in tears but remaining enduring hardship like a faithful soldier allowing God to pass you through the various appropriation systems in the spirit from one dimension to the other training you submitting yourself to prayer submitting yourself to the ministry of the word hear me ladies and gentlemen buy the books and read them pray every day and keep praying fast and keep fasting don't do that as the ultimate basis for strength you will be disappointed every time you do that remember you are carrying the check to the bank where the transaction will be appropriated if you try to make withdrawals when the check is not cashed it is still called fraud. You have to be patient until the check is cashed. It may not happen in one day. It may not happen in one year. For some of you, you are done with school. And yet God asks you to stay in Zaria. Why? He didn't give you an answer. Just be foolish enough to obey him. Be sure it is God. If you are not sure, meet other believers who are more matured. They will help you interpret what you had as God. But if it is him, obey him. Don't let carnally minded people make you feel you are stupid walking with God. Our lives are a proof that there is glory behind every training. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walk it in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Then the Bible says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. It says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. That even creation itself was subject to vanity by the will of him, the man Adam, who subjected the same hope. But that creation is waiting until it comes into what the Bible calls the glorious liberty of the sons. May God count on you in this generation. May you not disappoint destiny. That when the roll call of prophecy is being made, may your name not be omitted. The spirit of Gehazi and the spirit of Judas that stops men from becoming and finishing their training may it be far from you. Yeah. The spirit of Demas 
that brings people into God's program and still brings them out in the name of Jesus let it be far from you the mistakes that were made by many in scripture that stopped them from finishing this training I pray grace and mercy upon you may you not be a victim of it but like Abraham and Sarah like Gideon like Elijah like Esther and Mordecai like Ruth and Naomi like Peter like all who have enlisted their names they are archived in Hebrews chapter 11 the Bible calls them elders beyond being witnesses they have earned a ranking in the spirit and the Bible calls them elders and then it says to follow them I preached it on Sunday in Abuja who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me make an altar call right now and please no movement let me have your attention this is a most solemn moment the foundation for your becoming the foundation for your being relevant to the kingdom is hinged on your encounter with Jesus if you encounter koinonia and you did not encounter Jesus you cannot be a beneficiary of this a recipient of this life if you encounter Joshua Selman you encounter good preaching you fall and stand again and you do not encounter Jesus you will never be able to even begin the journey the journey starts with Jesus as Savior as Lord and as Christ there are people outside all the overflows and there are people right here two groups in one number one those who are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity tonight I truly want to surrender genuinely consciously sincerely there are those who are saying apostle I want to rededicate my life to Jesus for some reason my life has gone haywire I cannot truly say I am walking in a functional relationship with Jesus I want to give you that opportunity as I count one to five I want you to leave your seat wherever you are and very boldly Come and stand before me. We have a minute for you. At the end of the fifth count, I will lead you to pray. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. If you are coming from outside, make it fast, make it snappy. The moment the front is filled up, you have to stand where you are. I begin my counting now. One. He will not suffer my foot to be Carry your presence. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, oh. awesome God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man. Awesome God, mortal man, awesome God. Two, count into five and we begin to pray. Three, apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. You can have the assurance of salvation this night. Four, there are people in the overflow. You can just move to your screens. And for those who might be following online, here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. The final count, five. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. There are people gathered here, young, old. I want to appreciate you for making this noble decision. You've heard me say it is the wisest decision that any man can make this side of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. And I want to lead you to make this noble prayer don't just stand as though you are reciting a poem jesus is in this place and you are about to begin an excelling journey towards a victorious life please lift your right hand some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears say this as loud and as clear as you hear me say it say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word i, your word. I desire to be used by you I desire to be a manifestation of your glory 
in my life right now I receive your life I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I go from glory to glory in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead that you experience salvation and the joy of it tonight I declare your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb and I speak over you that your conscience is purged and you come into a new spiritual experience from today based on the authority of God's word and upon your declaration I declare over you that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life the grace to live a victorious life is imparted over you go forward ever and backward never Amen. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekato Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.